As Pastor Scott mentioned, this is my last Sunday with you all. Actually, my last working day. I won't even be in the office tomorrow. And so all week, I've been trying to think of how to make this sermon something memorable, something that you can look back on and say, yeah, that was Vicar Kubowitz. He did that one thing. And so I thought about bringing in Star Wars. That didn't quite work. Uh, So then I thought about talking about soccer somehow. That didn't quite work either. And I've chosen to preach on the Romans passage, which unfortunately doesn't have the word therefore in it. So I can't tell you that the therefore is there for a reason. And when you see a therefore in scripture, you've got to ask what the therefore is there for. Nikki and I, as we look forward to the coming years, we look to leaving Ascension and moving back to St. Louis, we're facing a lot of changes. And so I've chosen to preach on changes. And this last week, looking forward, thinking about everything, has gotten me reflecting on the nature of change and, and what it means not only for Nikki and I as we move forward, but for people For us as individuals, for us as a congregation, for us as human beings, what change is, what change means. And I think there are different kinds of change that we experience in our lives. One of these is the very slow, gradual, almost unnoticeable change that happens every single day. Anything from just growing older day by day, getting a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger, a little bit wiser as you grow up. Changes in the daily conversations you have as you sit around the dinner table and chat with your family, as you go to work and have conversations with different people in the office. Changes maybe in your commute into work. One day you hit all the green lights and you get there five minutes early. The next day there's a change and you get pulled over as you see the flashing lights behind you. We experience all of these changes every single day, and it's so common. We've become so used to these changes that we actually don't notice them as changes anymore. And we just call them normal. That's normal daily life, even though everything's always changing in our daily lives. And of course, as opposed to these slow, gradual changes, the opposite is true as well. There are these changes that take place just like that, that can change your life completely. You thought you were going one way, and then something happens, and you're going a completely different direction. These can be good and bad things. These can be things like marriages and weddings. These can be things like having a kid, getting a job promotion, or getting into that school that you've always dreamed of getting into. These can be things like the loss of a loved one. This could be the bad news from the doctor's office that you were kind of preparing for but didn't really want to receive. There's all these different types of changes that we can experience, both good and bad. And I think also there's a third category there. There's something kind of in between a good change and a bad change, which is very much what Nikki and I are experiencing now. It's a very bittersweet change for us. We've greatly enjoyed our time here at Ascension. We've learned, we've grown immensely. We've made some fantastic relationships here. And so we are excited to move on. We're excited to head to seminary. We're excited to take those, those next steps, but we're also definitely feeling a sense of loss as we leave Ascension and as we move back to the seminary. Some of those changes for us do include going back to seminary, spending time on campus instead of in the church office, spending time in the classrooms, learning from some of the the best and brightest minds the Lutheran Church has to offer. Um, And for Nikki, some of these changes include moving again to a new place, uh, setting up a home for us, a place that we can call our home for the coming year, reintegrating with that seminary community, making stronger relationships, as we do look forward to going out to our own call, look forward to serving our own church. And so in the midst of all these changes, both us moving to seminary, the daily changes that happen in your life, and those lightning fast changes that can completely uproot our lives, I think we, people in general, we crave a sense of stability. We crave something that's always going to be there, that one rock, that one thing we can always fall back to that we know is going to endure through these changes. These look like different things for different people. For a lot of people, this is your family. You know that your family is always going to be there. Your family has loved you even through your teenage years when you were at your worst. Your family has loved you through the late nights, the early mornings, the airport pickups, all that good stuff. Your family's always been there. They're always going to be there. They're that one solid rock you can rely on. For some people, this is your job. And when things aren't going well at home, maybe the relationship with your spouse isn't where it should be, the kids are not doing what they should be doing, at least you have that job you can escape to. At least you know for eight hours the coming day I can go to the office, I can disconnect from the home, I can focus on the work. 
For a lot of people, this can become your bank account, uh, that money that you have saved up as your security blanket. And you know that even if you get that bad news from the doctor, even if you got to do repairs on the house, whatever it might be, your bank account is there. It can bail you out. The saddest part is, the saddest part about all these things is none of them last. Family inevitably drifts apart or parents grow older and pass away. Relationships with siblings become strained. They become tense and they're, not, they're just not what they used to be. The job it can easily be laid off from your job. It can easily be gone. You can make one big mistake at work and lose that job. Your health can deteriorate very rapidly. You can always get that news from the doctor. And your bank account is really just one terrible week away from being zeroed out and you're left with nothing. And so in the midst of all this change, when we want so much to have something we can hold on to, we so much want that touchstone to ground us in reality, to be what we can fall back on, we find that none of these things last. None of these things can give us that security we're seeking. And now some of these things, they're not necessarily bad things. God has blessed us to have vocations. We have work so that we can have resources to make relationships, to spread his gospel. We can go and make those relationships and hopefully bring people into the love of Christ. He's given us families so that we can love each other, so that we can support each other. These are good things. These are gifts that God has given us. But the problem comes when we place these things above God in our lives. Luther tells us in his explanation to the first commandment that our God is anything that we place our ultimate fear, love, and trust in, anything we look to in our greatest times of need. And so when these things, our money, our bank account, our job, our family, when those are the things that we go to first, that we ultimately fall back on, that we put all of our hope and trust in, they've taken the place of God in our lives, and we're not in a right relationship with the Father. We're not in that relationship as it should be. But the good news comes in our readings today. What Jesus was telling the people in Deuteronomy is that God has chosen them not because they're great people, not because they were the biggest people on the earth, not because they had the best jobs, not because they were the best at worshiping, but because he loves them. Because God loves them so much, because he's made this promise to their ancestors that he's called them out, he's made them a holy people. And he's done the same thing for you and I. Through hearing the word preached among us, through the Holy Spirit working faith in our hearts, he has called each and every one of us. He has chosen each and every one of us to be a part of his family, to be a part of that holy nation. And while we were still worshiping these other gods of money, of our job, of our family, whatever it might be, Jesus Christ came to this earth. He died. He shed his blood. He gave up his body on that cross so that we could have that restored relationship with the Father. He loves us so much. He was willing to go to the grave on our behalf to make us fight with the Father. And so as we look at all these changes, as we maybe fear, we don't know what's coming next, I'm here to tell you that there's one thing that we can rely on. There's one thing that we know is never going to change, and that's the love that God has for us in Christ Jesus. And that's what Romans 8 was telling us and what Paul is trying to get across to us, that death, life, angels, demons, present, future, nothing. There is nothing in all of creation that will ever separate us from the love that God has for us. So when those big changes come, when that hospital calls and gives you that bad news, when the repairs have to be done on the house, when that loved one passes suddenly away, we have this promise to fall back on. We have this promise to trust in, that Jesus loves us, that we are his dear children, and there is nothing he wouldn't do for us, including going to the cross on our behalf. God shows us his love in Jesus Christ, but he also shows us his love through the people around us, the people gathered here in worship today. He shows us love as we, as a community, share our lives together, as we support each other, as we sacrifice for each other. Nikki and I have seen this at Ascension. We've seen you come together as a congregation over the loss of a member. We've seen your love for the community of Wichita and for Pratt as you've launched a new congregation out in Pratt. We've seen this love, and I can confidently say we've experienced this love in our lives as well. We've made fantastic relationships. We've been nothing but supported here. And so then, I want to leave you with this as the last thing that I'm going to say to all of you. 
thank you. Thank you for showing us the love of God, that love that he shows all of us, and continue on in that love. Continue to show that love in your families. Continue to spread that love here at Ascension in the congregation, and continue to spread that love here in Wichita as you bring the good news of Jesus Christ to people that so desperately need it. Amen. And so may the peace of God, may that love of God, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Would you please then stand and profess our common faith together with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty.